So right here, this is a flashing yellow LED. It basically simulates a uh, flickering light. It's supposed to be a candle like this guy here. Runs on four and a half volts. I've got a few of these. I bought them at the dollar store. And uh, I'm definitely going to throw a bunch of these in there. It doesn't quite go on and off as much as I'd like, but all of them should have a slightly different flicker rate. Big problem with them is that the switch is actually, uh, you blow on these as if it were a candle. So now it's off. Now it's on. So I'm going to have to pull this trigger out of there and put a different kind of switch in. I'll need the board itself because that's where the flickering actually occurs. There's a bunch of resistors wired into here, a capacitor, and uh, what else? C1, Q1, resistor 1, resistor 2, capacitor 2. So two capacitors, two resistors, and I forget what the Q1 is, but it will be needed. Uh, a couple other things I found here. We got this guy. This is a five or seven button switch. All different rates. And I've got a few of these laying around. When you take all the plastic apart, this is all it is. Again, it runs on four and a half volts right there with those button batteries. There's four LEDs. I took this one off. And my idea is to use a couple of these with the colors that are there. Two reds, a blue, and a green. I would like to replace all four of these with uh, yellow lights if the voltage will be the same Let's see if there's a good one here so there aren't any really slow blinkers on this unfortunately well that one's kinda slow but it's all the same that one might not be too bad but I want to use this hopefully to uh, get a lot of life going on on the inside of the kit here the downfall to this one is that right here, this is the actual button. So there's nothing on the back to indicate where anything is. But all of the electronic wiring in there is basically where all the uh, controls are coming from. In the old days, this would have been done with a CMOS chip, which is probably about as big as this battery here. But in these modern times we live in, they can spread that out over an entire area and have it be really nice and thin. The last one I picked up is this guy here. This was another dollar store purchase. And again, I'm going to have to take the uh, trigger button out of there and set it up in a different manner. I would like to pull these red LEDs out and put some different colors in. Yellow is the biggest color in this model so uh, hopefully if that's the same rating as these LEDs there will be no problem with that. So this will allow me to wire up a whole pile of fiber optics to this one little area alone which is going to be really nice. Or I could even use it as is and uh, just leave it red and blinking all over the place. This will fit really nice pretty much anywhere in the kit. And whereas this wouldn't fit anywhere at all, breaking it down into a strip that can be bent, this will pretty much fit wherever it needs to go. And very nicely too. So that's a basic look at where everything stands for the moment. Definitely about time to do some painting coming up. The airbrush will be coming into use really soon. I'm going to finish up a little more on the styrene, finish these off here, maybe do some tests on the lights. Uh, I'll finish off this area here and work a little more on this back room. There's not too much more to do to the space pod until I figure out what kind of details are going to be hidden in there. And uh, I haven't decided whether I'm going to glue that stairway well and uh, the elevator well into there because right now if you pull this out of here it just sits flat on the ground 
but if I put those in then obviously it's going to be sitting a little differently and lopsided. One last thing I'll mention is that one of my ideas was that for the back wall in addition to LEDs being underneath pointing out at the inside of the hull I'd also have some running along the top pointing out there as well. This top piece here won't exactly be this close to the ceiling, but it is fairly close overall. So I'm not going to be able to run any LEDs pointing out here, I don't think, whatsoever. However, one thing that uh, a lot of people don't do on this kit is light up the central area here. There is a ceiling in the ship. It is not included with the model. So basically all these wall pylons here they've got an extension arm that runs out to the middle for every one of them and those essentially give off all the light however since we can't do that what I'm thinking about doing is running a bunch of LEDs along the inside rim here and since we've got room underneath I'll be pointing them out towards the center and then that should give a lot of ambient light all across the model entirely so uh, the last 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 thing I'll mention before I sign off on this installment, this is a safety warning courtesy of Tesla B over at Hobby Talk. So every time I've been working with electronics, I don't usually worry about things like static discharge. And you really should. So uh, if you get yourself a uh, little wrist strap, this connects to any kind of grounding source. So that way when you're touching stuff, no electric static will build up on you which will get into the electronics which may blow them out immediately it could blow them out down the road that's latent failure and uh, it's definitely something to be aware of if you're just dealing with batteries and LEDs there's nothing to worry about once you actually plug an outlet into the wall and you start working like that if it's winter where you are and you've got heavy shag carpets if you uh, got a really fluffy cat or dog you're going to build up a lot of static and you will start damaging components, LEDs, uh, CMOS chips. If we get into those, those are definitely sensitive to that kind of thing and so on and so forth. So that is it for this installment. We're definitely making some progress. A lot of this uh, initial work, ooh, pr pretty much all there. There's not going to be too many more delays as far as actually getting into the meat of this uh, build. I can just get that to sit here real nice like that. And I definitely like having these magnets here. That helps out a lot. So I'm looking forward to gluing a lot of these walls in, but pretty much every single one of them has to be painted beforehand, and then we can start threading the fiber optics. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. See you in uh, the next installment.